Even though you can find many items in Ravio's shop in A Link Between Worlds, that doesn't mean he has all of them. In fact, there are a lot of items that you can find in both Hyrule and Lurule, as well as several upgrades to your arsenal. This guide will help you find them all, so let's get started with an item that's impossible to miss. I'm speaking, of course, of the lamp. As soon as you enter the sewers beneath Hyrule Sanctuary, you'll find a chest containing the lamp. But once the game opens up, you'll be able to start your item search. Kakariko Village holds several. First, you'll be able to buy your first bottle for 100 rupees from the salesman in the middle of town. Travel to the shop on your left. This is where you can purchase the completely optional Foul Fruit and Scoot Fruit. Pop over to the bee guy's house and speak with him to receive the net. Now you'll be able to catch bugs and fairies. As you exit the northeast part of town, you'll come across the fortune teller's tent. Speak with him and he'll give you the hint glasses. Wearing these reveals hint ghosts all over which will help you solve puzzles in exchange for one play coin. Head up to Rosso's hut and speak with him to receive the power gloves. These allow you to lift small rocks. Continue to the eastern portion of the map and enter Zora's domain. You'll see the shady guy leave the cave. After speaking with the Zora Queen, go back to Kakariko Village. The salesman will be selling her stolen item for 200 rupees. Buy it back, but before you leave the village, you'll want to catch the thief. He'll run away every time he spots you, so what you need to do is merge with the wall he's standing next to and pop out behind him. He'll apologize for stealing by giving you the Pegasus boots. Return to Zora's domain and give the stolen item back to receive the Zora's flippers, allowing you to swim. You can find the second bottle east of Lake Hylia. However, it contains a note from someone that claims they're injured on Death Mountain and that premium milk would help them. You cannot use this bottle until you complete the quest. Return to the milk bar in Kakariko Village and speak to the bartender. He will give you the premium milk. Before heading to Death Mountain, go to the forest south of the blacksmith's house. In the center, you'll find a pouch. Gully's mother says that he was going to give this to you, but it looks like he's disappeared. She'll give you the pouch and ask you to find her son. Now you can assign a second item to the X button. There's one more bottle you can find before taking on either the Tower of Hera or the House of Gales. Go to Lake Hylia and swim your way up the northern river until you go beneath the bridge.
Speak to the man camping beneath it and he'll give you a bottle. As you work your way up Death Mountain, you can use the hookshot to travel across the broken bridge. Go in the cave past the two lionels and travel down the moving platforms until you come to a solid platform with three small walls and two lionels. Merge with the bottom wall and board the moving platform. Follow them along until you reach the fort. Take the left path until you spot a doorway leading out. On the other side, merge with the wall and cross the gap to reach the injured bouldering guy. Give him the premium milk and he will give you the bottle so that you can finally use it for whatever you want. The fourth bottle can be found once you enter Low Rule. Go to the abandoned house that's in the same location as Link's house in Hyrule. Bomb the back of it and enter the new entrance to find the bottle in the chest. The fifth and final bottle can be found in the cave near the big bomb house. Pay the man inside for use of his bombs and use it to destroy the huge rock. Inside you'll find the rupee fairy. Throw 3,000 rupees in her fountain and she will reward you with the final bottle. If you found the bee guy a bee earlier, you'll remember that he asked you to find a golden bee next. These will pop up randomly from cut grass, but you can also buy one in the Skull Woods. Find the cave on the northern edge and enter it to find the mysterious man. He'll sell you a mystery item for 888 rupees, which turns out to be the golden bee. Take this to the bee guy to be awarded with the bee badge. Now any bees you come across will automatically fight nearby enemies for you. Each of the dungeons in Low Rule also holds an item. The thieves hideout holds one chunk of master ore. To obtain it, rescue the thief girl and bring her to the southernmost edge of floor B3. Press the switches on the left with her to reveal a hidden path. At the end is the chest containing the master ore. You can find another chunk of Master Ore in the Skull Woods dungeon. When you reach the left side of floor B1, leave through the bottom exit and go right. Cut away the flowers and fall down the hidden hole. Go left to toss down the eye that is your objective, but before dropping down, return to the right and continue along until you reach the next platform. Travel along it until you reach the chest containing the Master Ore. Return to the blacksmith in Hyrule with the two Master Ore chunks and he will upgrade the Master Sword to the Tempered Master Sword. You can find the stamina scroll in the ice ruins. To reach it, clear away the ice on floor B3 and ride the moving platform up to B2. Go in the nearby door and pull the statue's tongue. This will move the floor away and allow you to drop down to a chest.
Inside is the stamina scroll which doubles your stamina meter. The Hillian Shield is found in the Turtle Rock Dungeon. You must defeat all the enemies in the central room of B1 in order to reveal it. Once it appears, raise the platform on the northern edge to its highest point and get on top of it. Travel across the nearby walkway to the chest and receive your Hillian Shield. When you reach the Swamp Palace dungeon, decrease the water on floor B1 to its lowest point. Jump in and go through the northern door. Avoid the traps and on the other side you'll find the blue mail, increasing Link's defense. The Sand Palace dungeon contains the Titan's Mitt. In the top central room of the first floor, pull the lever on the left to flood the room with sand. Use the sand rod to cross to a nearby platform and press a switch. This will open the way to the Titan's Mitt's chest. Work your way to your prize using the sand rod and Link's merge ability. The Titan's Mitt will allow you to pick up big rocks. You can obtain the third piece of Master Ore in the Dark Palace, but it can be really tricky. Once you reach the top floor, go to the bottommost room. You'll find two switches in the center which seemingly only raises and lowers their respective platforms. However, the lower one also flips the northern wall. Set a bomb near it, rush to the top, hit the switch, and merge with the wall to reach the room with the chest containing the third Master Ore chunk. The fourth chunk is actually found in Low Rule's Sanctuary. To reach it, use the Titan's Myth to get rid of the large rock in the fenced-in area. Work your way through the sewers and once you reach the other side you'll find a chest containing the fourth piece of Master Ore. Take it to Low Rule's blacksmith and he will upgrade the Master Sword to its strongest form, the Golden Master Sword. The last items to be found are both in Low Rule Castle. The red mail is found on the fourth floor of the castle. To reach it, extinguish the two lights near the chest that has the compass in it. In the dark, you'll find two walkways of light going down. Carefully cross one of them and on the other side is the chest with the red mail. Now your defense is as good as it can be. The final item, the Bow of Light, is impossible to miss since it's giving to you during your climactic battle. And there you have it, all the items to be found in A Link Between Worlds. Happy hunting and be sure to keep an eye on Game Explained for more on Zelda and other things gaming too.